with the Evening Standard, a man well acquainted with all of this, and that's Robert Fox. Robert, good to see you again good morning. this morning. Um, tell us about the resistance here and who is still there doing it. Well, it is the Azov Brigade or Battalion. They're down to just a few hundred now. But there's sort of a kind of a skinhead element with them. They are very, very tough indeed. And I think that that's why uh, they're a propaganda gift for the Ukrainians. And this is why that they will be remembered as, as making... The, they'll be like... Uh, heroes. The, the heroes at Thermopylae and so on. Yeah. Because they're consuming so much. Russian attention, military power, and the Russians are getting really worried. They wanted to take their troops away from Mariupol to get on with the fight mm. where we have a fresh offensive yet again. We're practically having a fresh, fresh offensive announced every 10 hours. How are they but holding out with ammunition and things? I mean, even, ah, you know, normal things like There was food. a sneaky report mm -hmm. over the weekend that they were flying in helicopters overnight. And it's only small arms ammunition, machine guns, yeah. things like that at most. They've got, unfortunately, these civilians, including about 30 children, it's still thought, um, in, in, in wards, as it were, in the, in the underground mm. tunnels. Uh, they've got a 100 of their own wo wounded. And it seems to me, anyway, they have decided to make an absolute last stand there, which is such a propaganda gift mm. uh, for Zelensky. But above all, that they can't move. The, the Russian troops there can't move on. And think of this, there are still 100,000 civilians in Mariupol unaccounted for. That is roughly just over the number of total Russian troops in eastern Ukraine at the moment. The numbers game is beginning to go seriously against the Russians. But it has to be said... But I don't know what you mean. There's 100,000... Civilians. Civilians unaccounted for. for. And how do you look after 100,000? It, it's now... Oh, I'm got, Russia, got you. You Russia needs attacking forces and occupying forces. They don't it's need not managing, people, not managing camps. Or, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. they've been doing a bit of that. There are several things going on uh, at the moment which are absolutely fascinating. First of all, it has to be said, I don't want to be too sound too partisan. The Ukrainians have been brilliant at the information game, and we all have, to, and we are all subject possibly even victims, there are things, quite clearly, they do not want to tell us about. Uh, they kept it away. Obvious one, what are their real casualty levels? How many Ukrainian soldiers, professional, amateur, volunteer, have been killed, wounded, are out of action? We haven't a clue. And they've been very, very clever in keeping that away from us. The other thing that they have been brilliant about is that they have not explained... And they have had, uh, they feel they have no reason to explain to us who is really in charge. And that is really the genius of their resistance because it's a, a system which is supposed to have come from British military practice, the best military practice of the, Bund uh, 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 of the Wehrmacht, where you do your own thing. It's called mission command. You let the commander command at the lowest possible level. That is certainly going on. They are doing their own thing. They're allowed to take their own initiative and they only inform the higher command, A, when they need resupply ammunition to help with medicine getting casualties out, or they don't ask for permission to do things. And it is absolutely the opposite of the very rigid top-down command of, of, of the Russian troops. Now, if I could just finish with this one, there are some intriguing reports from intelligence, from deep American intelligence, which is in Newsweek now, running overnight, that the top Russian general, the top, top Russian general, Valery Gerasimov, was sent on a special mission to Ukraine by Putin to find out what the heck is going on dot, 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 read, what the heck is going wrong? Mm -hmm. And that's why there's a big thing that, that, that we will see a, a big change, a big change even if nothing happens from the Victory Day speech 
next Monday. Yeah, that's planned five days' time. Uh, yeah. I just want to ask you about that, because overnight there were other reports as well from two sources um, for, that top military intelligence in Russia were possibly planning a coup over Putin. And uh, this is also being linked to two FSB officers being put under house arrest. And with, as you say, getting this deep information from American intelligence about um, quite how bad the picture really is in Ukraine, do you think that perhaps President Putin stays in number and perhaps why the Russian soldiers are so desperate and storming Mariupol, because it's a, it will be a trophy for the Russians if they're able to claim it. Look, I don't think those Russian soldiers, the Grunts, the Ivans, are particularly loyal to Putin. They're loyal to themselves and they're loyal to their version uh, of Russia. And I think this is a problem. And the infantry has been reluctant to, fly, to fight because they've been very vulnerable. The ambush tactics of the Ukrainians have been brilliant. Back to your story. Yes, it is running very, very heavily. It has to be said that American, and I have to say, with them, British, Swedish, Finnish, Polish intelligence has been absolutely excellent. And I don't think I'm giving it away any secrets now, because I think this is generally known. They're listening to all the mobile phone communications mm -hmm. and they know what's going wrong. If Russia is really going to go on to prosecute this campaign, push it forward, because they're not getting into the Donbass in the say that they were. We hear they keep on going to attack, round up, corral, kettle the flower, the hard boys of the armoured units of the Ukrainian army. They haven't got there yet. And indeed, with the new American, Canadian and Australian artillery, it's the same gun, the uh, Ukrainians are beginning to push back at Kharkiv because they can outrange the, uh, the Russian artillery. And that's why the latest kit announced by Boris Johnson. A lot of it is ranging stuff, okay. electronic stuff. So it's absolutely balanced on, 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 an, on a knife edge at the moment. But back to Putin. He has turned this. He wanted to wipe out Ukraine, but it's now a battle for his own survival. Mm. Which is scary. Yeah. Robert, thank you. Fascinating mm -hmm. listening. We really appreciate it. Robert Fox is the defence editor at the... Can I yes. congratulate you on your very discreet suit? <laughs> <laughs> you know, truthfully, I think I got up so early today and I don't like to turn the light on to disturb... It's very wife. cheerful. Got dressed in the dark. <laughs> I think I reached for the wrong suit. I think this is more showbiz Saturday night. But anyway... <laughs>